How to Raise a Feminist Son from the New York Times. Tom Golden of Men Are Good responds. We're going to talk today about an article I read in the New York Times called Raising a Feminist Son by Claire Miller. Hmm. And a note to Claire, before we get started, Claire, I was a stay-at-home dad in the 1980s. My wife and I both went half-time in order to have an adult in the house with our kids all the time. So I'm coming from a place of experience, not a place of not knowing. Anyway, the article, Raising a Feminist Son, well, it starts off pretty well. It says, you know, we need to give boys more choices. Man, I'm going, yeah, that looks like a good thing, yeah. But, oh, it turns sour pretty quickly. Because she says something like, um, how's it? That's because women's roles can't expand if men's don't too. Oh, okay. So really, it's all about the women. That's pretty nutty. I mean, that's, uh... That's, uh, oh well. Let's get on with the article. She starts off with the first section, let him cry. Hmm. You know that phrase, let him cry. You know how that took me to? It took me to a parent who's uh, sitting there. They just put the one-year-old down in the bedroom. They came out. They're starting to watch Game of Thrones, and they hear the crying in the bedroom, and they say, oh, let him cry. You know? <laughs> Her statement, let him cry, is not about offer him compassion. It's not about, I'm going to be more attentive and loving. It's about, let him cry. In other words, I guess she's saying, allow him to cry. But it just struck me as funny right off the bat. But allow him to cry, you know, this whole thing about wanting boys to cry more is just such a feminist thing. And it just drives me absolutely nuts. Because what it does is it shows their ignorance. Complete ignorance. I mean, boys are not like girls. They're different. They're biologically different. And it starts in the womb. You know, this whole thing about boys not having the same kind of access to emotional tears as girls is a biological fact. It's not something that's, that's so subtle. And we know now from some of the research on testosterone and even more from the reading of the trans men and they're writing about what happens to them when they take huge doses of testosterone. Guess what happens? The tears dry up. And they're not able to articulate their emotions in the same way they could when they were literally biological women. Anyway, feminists need to learn this. They need to learn that we're different even from birth. Oh my gosh. The first day of life, they've done research and they show that boys will respond to a mobile, this thing that goes back and forth, and little girls will respond more to human faces. Hmm. Now tell me they're socialized at one day old. No, they're not. And we'll be going more and more into some of this research because that's literally what they're missing. I mean, the feminists are going on their own assumption that everything is socialized. It's all socialization. And you know, socialization is a big part of things, but it's not the only part. And if they are going to do this, if they're going to say that all this is socialized and boys just need to cry more, guess what that does? That completely negates looking at his uniqueness and how he's different. What needs to happen is for the women, the mothers, to study boys a little bit, to start to understand boys and their uniqueness, to start to understand that, hey, they're different from the girls. Then you take that and you teach your son how he is different. Once that's done, then what happens? You can have a loving relationship based on his uniqueness rather than based on something that you think he needs to be. Because right now, that's what I see happening. I see women thinking, oh, boys need to cry more. Why? Because they're saying that he needs to be more like them. They're using themselves as the default, just like this feminist did in this, let him cry. It's crazy. Boys aren't like that sometimes. And they have some very, very good reasons not to cry. And you need to educate yourself about what those reasons are so you can love your son. Right now, you're not loving your son. You're expecting him narcissistically to be like you. And frankly, that's bullshit. Now, the next one. Oh, the next section was give him role models. I had to laugh when I saw that give him role models because, frankly, it's the feminists who have been breaking up families, trying to destroy the nuclear family, trying to take dad out of the home. It's the feminists, along with the daggone Simon Legree lawyers, who are fighting shared parenting, who are trying to keep dads away from their children. 
and this feminist has the gall to say, give him role models? Oh, boy. I mean, it just blows my mind. And now we're finding, of course, that fatherlessness is not just correlated to all the problems we see in young people. It's causative. The research has gotten to the point now where they are literally, social science research is saying that fatherlessness causes things. That's huge. You never hear that in social science research. But there's a number of things that happen with kids, these negative stuff, you know, the uh, pregnancy, early pregnancy, the drug use, the suicide, all kinds of things are, that are happening. They're connecting with fatherlessness, some of which they're saying are causative. So, yeah, give him role models. He really needs it because the feminists have stripped him of his father. Next section, please. Okay. So the next section is let him be himself. Man, that's a great idea. Let him be himself. But the article doesn't really let him be himself. No, by the end of the little section on let him be himself, she's saying, well, let, make him do dress up. You know, have him do this. Have him do artwork. You know, she's saying he needs to do this and that and the other. Not let him be himself. Not find out what he really likes and then do that with him or enjoy that together? No, nothing like that. But this little section does something else that just irked the dickens out of me. She, she, they're talking about play. And they're talking about uh, pink and blue. And they're, they're making believe that pink and blue are these huge determinations of boys and girls. And they're saying, oh, but it's never been pink and blue. You know, it used to be that boys liked pink and girls liked blue. Well, that's probably true. But you know what? That has nothing to do with their differences in play. There's a huge amount of science about boys and girls and play. And frankly, this article misses all of it. You know, what, is the, what does the research say? The research says that the differences in boys and girls play starts in utero. It starts in utero, about two or three months in utero. There's this testosterone flood. Boom! Washes over most of the boys with this heavy testosterone in utero. And it changes their brains, it changes their everything. One of the things that changes is the way they play and the way they like to play. Now, what's interesting is there's also about, I think it's 10 to 15 percent of girls who also have this testosterone flood and they're going to want to play like the boys. In fact, you've known many of these young girls, they're called tomboys. But the boys and girls are very different in the way they play. The boys like to play in teams. They like to choose sides, right? Who's going to be up first, blah, 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 blah. The girls like to do what? They like to play house. They like to role model what they're going to be when they grow up. You know, I've never seen my daughter choose sides to play house. You know, they're very different. And there's of course there's gray. Of course there's girls like the tomboys who like to play with the boys. There's some boys who like to play more girl stuff. But most boys are going to be more like the guys. Most girls are going to be more like the girls. We've got to realize that. We've got to understand it ourselves. Then we've got to teach our kids, you're different because this is your biology. This is the way you are. We help them love themselves for who they are. Not tell them they should or shouldn't do anything else. Then once we can love them for who they are, then we can have a positive relationship as a parent. Until then, you're absolutely screwed. You know, the other piece of the research on this play stuff is fascinating. You know, for years they did this research on play and they found over and over again that boys like the trucks and girls like the dolls. And so the feminist would say, oh, but wait a minute, you know, that's, that's probably socialization. Even and then they did it younger and younger, like three-year-olds they tried, and it still came out, boys like the trucks and girls like the dolls. Still the feminist said, no, 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 no. And so they got frustrated. What did they do? Some very creative researcher went to a chimpanzee tribe. They did the same study with chimpanzees. And guess what happened? The little chimp boys liked the trucks, and the little chimp girls liked the dolls. Now, were they socialized into that? I don't think so. So this whole, whole thing of the way we play is in our blood. It starts when we're in utero. This is something parents need to know. They need to bless in their children so they can see them for who they are, not who they want them to be. So many times feminists are looking at it, he should be more like me. He should be more like me. Forget about it. Let him be like him and bless him for it. Okay, next up. 
Okay, so the next section I thought was going to be good because it started off by selling, saying, teach him to take care of himself. I thought, yeah, great start. Oh, but it went sour pretty quick because guess what they're talking about? They're not talking about him taking care of himself to see his own needs, stand up for his own needs. No, take care of himself means do what? Means do chores. Means do Come on. Take care of himself means do more around the house. Make sure he does chores. Make sure he folds the clothes. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. Take care of yourself doesn't mean do chores. But in this article, yes, it does. And then it goes on. Take care of others. Now, that's a little bit more honest because that's what they want him to do. They want him to take care of others. Why? Because of gynocentrism. Gynocentrism says males should sacrifice in order to take care of the females. And so that's what mothers push. Get out there and take care of other people. Sacrifice. Do things for others. It's not taking care of yourself. It's taking care of everybody else. This is the gynocentric mantra that silently yaps over and over again in the minds of parents, which then goes into the minds of boys over and over and over until the boy gets this whole, he's locked into this motive. He's got to take care of everybody. He's got to provide and protect for everybody. You know, and that's what we're talking about. So, as parents, we need to understand that this kind of gynocentric pushing is going to be a heavy burden on our sons, our young men, and our men in general. And we need to find creative ways for them to adjust to that kind of gynocentric collar that they have to wear. Okay, next section was, oh, what's the next one? Share the work. <laughs> Share the work. Oh, boy. It talks about housework and how he's supposed to do more housework and blah, 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 blah. You know, most of the studies out now show that if you factor in housework along with work outside the home, that men and women have about the same amount of stuff they're doing. You know, it's just, it's a crazy business. But we need to teach both boys and girls to be responsible and to take care of themselves and to help with taking care of others. And that's okay. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. But please, you know, let's go easy on all the gynocentric stuff. Oh, boy. The next one. Encourage friendships with girls. Ay, yeah, yeah. Again, they're completely ignorant of the research. You know, the research is out there that worldwide, children, as they age, they start to want more and more to play with their own sex. You can remember back to when you were a little guy or a little girl, you know, when you were one or two, it didn't make that much difference. Once you got to be about three years old, you started to play more with your own sex. Five or six, more still. Eight or nine, ten, more still. There's this bifurcation that happens. This is not something that's socialized. This is just something that happens. It's probably related to the testosterone in utero. But we tend to prefer to play with our own sex. And that's okay. Now, as if you know that as a parent, and then you encourage them to also play with with the opposite sex, that's fine. But you've got to first know that the inclination is to play with our own sex. And that's just something that's built into the, to the biocomputer. And so it goes. Next section. The next section is no means no. You can imagine what that one says, and you're probably right in your guesses. You know, it's all about how he needs to learn how to respond and, and not do certain things. Oh boy, you just can't make this stuff up. You know, no does mean no for both boys and girls. But I didn't see anything in that little article about, you know, that he should say no to her relational violence. Nah, I missed that part. It's all about him not touching other people. <laughs> oh boy, again, this is mom's idea of what she likes, of what she wants, and what she wants from her son. And she's pushing that onto him. Oh well. The next section was, speak up when others are intolerant. Here's more gynocentrism. You know, speak up when others are intolerant. Get out there and take a chance and make sure you're pushing people, you know, not to act out, not to be bad. You are the police. You need to go out there and take care of things. You know, that's a message that may be appropriate for someone when they're, you know, in their late teens or 20s. But give me a break. When it's a little kid... 
I mean, you need to just tell them to take care of themselves. The adults should be the ones to, to step in when there's intolerance. Oh, boy. And then the next section was, never use girl as an insult. I don't need to say much more about that. Never use girl as an insult. It's like, why not? Why can't he be insulting? Why can't he say, you know, you're a girl? What, what the hell? What's wrong with that? And she can say, well, you're a boy. I mean, this, this is what kids do. They go back and forth. Oh, well, never use girl as an insult. Claire, please, let your boys do what they need to do. You can teach them to be kind, but you also need to teach them to have fun, argue back and forth. So it goes. Oh, God. Oh, boy. The next section. Read a lot, including about girls and women. So they're saying, read a lot. That's good. But now they're saying, but make sure that he reads about girls and women. Guys don't like to read about girls and women. Don't you get it? He doesn't like that. He likes to read about sports, about action, about wars, about all kinds of things like that. But reading about girls and women? Come on. This is just so biased, so ignorant, and so completely void of understanding the research. The research is really clear about what boys like to read. And it's exactly what they've taken out of the schools. It's exactly what they don't have. What they have in schools now is what girls like to read. So she's saying, oh, a feminist son, he should read about girls and women. Oh, boy. Next section. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, me. And the next section was celebrate boyhood. <laughs> after all the things we've told you not to do or what to do, after all the directions we've given you, now it's time to celebrate being a boy. But guess what? Claire doesn't know what a little boy is. She's so far off, it's, 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 it should be illegal. She needs to take a parenting course so that she can figure out what a little boy really is. And she needs to stay away from her feminist friends who are the, quote, experts. They're not telling you what's out there research-wise. If you're going to celebrate being a boy, you've got to know what a boy is. And a boy is not a girl. It's not. Understand what he is. Understand what he likes. Understand his nature. Then teach him about that. Once you teach him about that, then you can have a relationship. Until then... You're just herding cattle. You know what I mean? Herding cattle. That's what feminist parents are. Cattle herders. Until they really understand the uniqueness and the beauty of boys and how they're different. And can honor that and teach boys about that and then learn to love them for that. You're herding cattle, boys and girls, because really, that's if you don't know who they are, then you're missing the mark by a long shot. Okay, and you know, let's not forget Claire and all others, Lacey, whoever. Men are good, and so are boys. Learn about them. Like, subscribe, comment, come visit me on Patreon. I could use your support. We'll see ya.